So my friend Don was uh, curious about how you go about sharpening a Scandinavian ground style knife, specifically the Mora Classic Number One, uh, which is a really good knife, uh, wooden steel, and that's the kind I think he went with getting. And they are a little bit weird to sharpen compared to a traditional knife like we're used to in North America and most of Europe. So I figured I'd uh, go about demonstrating it. Now I'm not going to sharpen this one because it's already really sharp, but I am going to sharpen this uh, Mora 510, which has got the exact same kind of blade. Now about this blade is you've got it's basically sharpened from all the way down here, so the edge of the knife to the primary bevel. There is no secondary bevel like most knives, it just gets sharpened straight down. And it's got a flat section up here. So it, it's kind of like a saber grind knife, but with no secondary bevel to sharpen on. So, basically, um, what you want to do, and I'm using a, uh, right now I'm going to sharpen on a 4,000 and 8,000 grit Norton stone. I normally go down even further, but the knife isn't that dull, so I'm just going to use 4,000 as my minimal grit. Uh, if you were using Arkansas stones, you'd start on a soft, move to a hard then hard black or translucent or whatever you want to use as your fine stone. So I'm going to run it along the 4000 grit Norton stone, which is a very good stone by the way. And I'm going to move to 8000 grit and then I'm going to finish it up on a leather strop. So with this knife here, uh, the trick I like to use for sharpening almost any knife, but it's particularly useful on a Scandi, is to uh, get yourself a good quality permanent marker. Uh, I have this purple Sharpie here. And actually, draw, fill in the bevel you want to sharpen. So now I've got her all uh, colored up and the reason you do this is because you want to wear the stone on you want to see where the stone is cutting now ideally you want the stone to cut the entire swatch of purple but some of them usually mine are are a little hollow ground in the center of the primary bevel there so what you I, basically what you want to do is make sure it's wearing at the top of the bevel and it's wearing on the edge down here. So what I'm going to do is make sure my stone is wet and I'm just going to start to sharpen it. And there you go. That's a perfect cut, so I cut off a nice clean swatch of the bevel. It's all the way down to the edge. There's a little bit of purple here on the top, but that's not part of the edge. It's just I overcolored it a little bit. So that's exactly how you want the knife to be. That being said, if there is a little bit of purple stuck in the middle, that's not a big deal. You just want to make sure at the top of the bevel and the edge of the bevel are completely sharpened. So I'm just going to uh, explain a bit how I go about sharpening. I know everyone sharpens different, but this is my way of doing it. Uh, a lot of people like to use uh, things that hold the knife in a certain position, but I have a lot of practice. My hands are pretty steady and I normally know what I'm doing enough. I don't need a guide or anything. But some people do like that. And I do four swipes back and forth on each side of the bevel. And I make sure I turn up a little bit to cut the tip. 
and just draw her back and forth. When you first start sharpening, you generally want to sharpen slowly. And I'm just going to sharpen this for a little while, and when I'm done on the 4000 grit, I'll come right back. Although it'll be instant for you. Alright, so after a few more passes, I am ready to go to the 8000 grit. Uh, not much here. You can recolor the uh, edge if you want. Because uh, every grit of stone feels a little bit different, and you might hold it a little off kilter. However, uh, I pretty much know how these things, how to handle this sort of thing, so I'm just going to not bother coloring it and continue on. And this 8000 is the polishing stone, so uh, a lot of people use this as the final step of sharpening, especially on a water stone, but I find I can get it even sharper when I use a strop. So I'll go ahead and strop it when I'm done. And I'll be right back when it's time to sharpen. Uh, strop. Alright, so now I'm on to stropping. Uh, stropping is easy, probably the easiest part of sharpening. And it's also probably the strop is about the cheapest tool you can get for sharpening. Uh, I make them myself and I'd recommend you do the same. They're really easy to make. You need a piece of... Uh, regular leather, I like veg tan tooling leather, uh, a chunk of wood, and some honing compound which you can get at places like leevalley.com or Amazon or wherever. This is flex cut gold honing compound. Uh, Lee Valley sells a green honing compound under the brand name Viratas which is also very good. And what you do is you make sure your strop is charged with honing compound You'll want to condition and take care of your strop. Uh, that's probably for another video I'll talk about strop maintenance and strop care. But the idea with this is you pull backwards on the strop against the edge of the knife. Now what I do is I first sharpen the whole bevel with the strop. And then I go for the edge of the knife with the strop. And basically what you're doing is you're deburring. Uh, almost any stone will leave a very thin burr on the edge of the knife which will easily get bent over and dull the knife. So what you're doing is you're polishing and you're removing that burr on the edge of the knife. And this is really, for me, the secret to getting not only shaving sharp, but slicing newsprint like butter sharp. You know, you want this sharp. Now, I don't actually normally use my hand strop. This is in my uh, uh, expedient sharpening case uh, for when I'm out on the run and I want to sharpen something. I carry a kit for sharpening in this bag here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I regularly strop this in the shop, which involves a little bit more expensive equipment than what I'm showing you here. Right, so this is a Tormek T3. It has a grinding wheel that is cooled by a basin of water so it won't ruin the temper on a knife if you use it. And it also has a leather stropping wheel. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strop on this. I use the grinder for rough grinding most of my knives for removing lots of metal. But uh, it also has this really easy polishing station. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge it with honing compound. This is that Viratas green honing compound I was talking about. And it's an amazing machine. It's made in Sweden. They're reliable as all hell. This is the uh, Lower model, I think it's the cheapest, it's the T3. It's got the plastic body, but man, does it ever work. And I'm just going to run the knife on the honing wheel. Well, the honing wheel is spinning that way. And I'm just going to use it like a strop and polish up the knife. It takes a lot of the arm work out of it, 
And back in the day, they did have slow moving grinding wheels and stropping wheels. Blacksmiths often had them, but they were pedal powered. And this actually goes about the same speed. So it's really, it's a nice tool. And this will strop up really quick and when I'm done, I will show you the final result. Right, so now the edge of the knife is a mere finish. I can see my face in it. And it is really very sharp. So it will shave hair quite easily. Uh, better than a cheap razor. So I am quite fond of this. And I know not everyone sharpens the same way I do, but this is how I do it. If you have any tips or suggestions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, just one more thing, I'm going to uh, clean up the knife and then I'm going to oil it and I'm just going to show you what I use to oil it that's food safe because this is a carbon steel knife and it can rust quite easily. Right, so I've washed up the knife, soap and water sort of thing, and I want to prevent it from corroding, but I might want to cut food with it. So I don't want to use anything that will taint the food, not taste good, or be bad for me. So what I've got here is uh, some mineral oil. Now you can find this in the pharmacy or the grocery store or wherever you get your medicine in the, uh, in the laxative section. Okay, I, in small doses it is not a lax, laxative, but it, it's, that's where you find it. Apparently if you take a gulp, for, gulp of it, it'll clean you out. Uh, however, a little bit on a knife blade won't hurt you. The idea is this is food safe, it's meant for consumption, and it's a great corrosion, uh, anti-corrosion stuff. So what I do, so I take a little bit, I uh, pour it on a chunk of paper towel, and I just run the knife through it, get it nice and goopy, and then use the other side of the paper towel and wipe it off until I'm left with a thin film. And I'll do this with the regular Mora Classic too while I've got it out, and just uh, get it goopy, and clean it off till it's a fine film. And now they're relatively safe from corrosion. You still have to keep them clean and wash them and all of that. But now I've got a razor sharp knife and I am good to go. So hopefully that helped you if you were trying to figure out how to properly sharpen a Scandinavian ground style knife like these Moras here. And you guys have an excellent night and thanks for watching.